everyone, it's Missy. So I decided to try a little experiment. I received apricots through the Bountiful Basket and I decided I was going to try to make some jam out of them because I saw a recipe for it in my ball candy book. And as you can see I'm just slicing them, removing the pit. These things were very ripe so I knew I had to do something with them. I had toyed around with the idea of dehydrating them but I thought no, I really want to try and see if this is going to work. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting the apricots into small pieces because I'm going to crush them just like I would if I was making jam out of any other kind of fruit. And I'm putting them into a glass pan over to the side. I'm keeping the pieces fairly small because this fruit is very dry and I didn't understand how it could crush so easily. It's very easy for me to um, cut into pieces, get the pit out. It's, it's wonderful to work with. And as you can see, I'm just following that seam along there. And I really do like to eat dried apricots too. Um, but I wanted to try this on my jam and jelly maker and see if it would work. And I had found that there's kind of like this formula that goes with the jam and jelly maker versus how much fruit to how much sugar to um, the lemon juice and so forth. So why not give it a shot? After all, I do feel that the recipes are a little bit limited for the unit, especially in the, if you're just looking at the cookbook that came with it, but also if you happen to be um, looking on their website. So I just took my potato masher and I started crushing them with that. It took uh, quite a bit of arm strength to do it this way, and I was very tempted to put it in a food processor. I didn't. Now I kind of wish I did. But I did add the same amount of pectin. I'm following the recipe for plum and peach jam. And I was following the low sugar method, but you sprinkle three tablespoons of pectin on the bottom. And then you're supposed to add in your crushed fruit on top. Kind of spread it out as even as possible so that way the pectin is incorporated. And I can't remember how much fruit I had. It's been a while. <laughs> and I know it was the same as, like I said, the recipe, and if you were just following that, um, for the peach at least. And then I went and added um, the lemon juice and also the pat of butter. I think it's like half a tablespoon, I want to say. And it was all looking good. I had the unit plugged in. I selected jam and I left it at the default for 21 minutes and I selected enter and it started spinning around perfectly and I thought okay this this should work and I went over and I got my auto camera ready ready and I had my jelly jars in there and I preheated the jars um, there's really uh, the preheating of jars is the same for everything you just like preheat and you select start and they'll be ready in 12 minutes and then I noticed that the peach and plum jam setting, or I'm adding the sugar right now. So I, I did a little sugar method. But as you can see, the sugar wasn't dissolving. It was caking up. And you see how that paddle is going back and forth? Um, it was jamming up. And you can see that right now. And I got really, really worried because I thought, oh no, I'm going to burn sugar, burn fruit, because it's not stirring enough. And I panicked and knocked over my camera, so that's why it shut off. Um, what I did is I ended up adding water into the unit, and I made like a chutney. And I did find this recipe in my book, and it turned out interesting. I don't know if there's enough acidity. It did seal perfectly in my canner according to the recipe. So I'll have to try it out. But that was my experiment. I learned my lesson. I am not going to deviate from any recipes that Ball Cannon gives me on my jam and jelly maker. The end.